Yeah, g'day YouTubers, uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Today we're going to have a little bit of a uh, review on the different types of chains that are out there that are available. So we've got four different chains here, but we're mainly going to talk about the first two chains, which is a semi-chisel and a full chisel chain. And we'll get to these two other chains at the back after that. So first of all, a semi-chisel chain is the best all-rounder chain that you can uh, use. It normally has an angle of 30 degrees uh, top plate angle, uh, 60 degrees top plate cutting angle, and has zero degrees tilt on it. Semi-chisel works best in all timber from soft to hard. So that's your best all-rounder chain. Okay, it has a nice rounded corner on it. So if we look at this replica, you can see that it has a nice rounded corner. And if you look at the front, the point, it has it's nice and rounded. So it doesn't get as blunt as quick as a full chisel. So full chisel is mainly used in soft to medium timber. The angles that you would normally have are 25 degrees or 55 to 60 degrees top plate cutting angle and a 10 degrees downward tilt. If a full chisel has a 10 degrees downward uh, tilt, that's a compounded beveled angle. What that generally means is that the primary angle is 30 degrees. So your primary angle is here. That's your 30 degrees. Your secondary angle is your 60 degree angle. That's either made by a file or it's made by a grinding wheel. So there are your two primary angles that are on a chain. Uh, you've got your side plate uh, as well, uh, but uh, that's usually not adjustable. It can be adjustable, but that's getting into uh, more specifics. Uh, so we don't want to really go into side plate angles at the moment. Okay, so the next thing is, on your full chisel chain, you come to a very, very sharp point. Very sharp point. And we'll just see if we can zoom in and have a really good look at that. So, as you can see, that nice rounded corner, and there's quite a couple of mil there. So, it takes a little bit more to make this blunt, where as we look at the full chisel, very, very sharp point. So it doesn't take much. The moment that you blunten this point here, uh, you won't be cutting very good. So where do we use a semi-chisel as opposed to a full chisel? Or where do we use a full chisel as opposed to a semi-chisel? So for the beginners out there, that can sort of be a little bit confusing. First of all, let's say that your semi-chisel uh, is used 95% in cutting most timber. It'll cut soft timber to hard timber. So it's your best all round. You can't go wrong with it. So, okay, where are we going to use this one? Your full chisel. Full chisel chain is a bit more aggressive. Maybe 15% more aggressive. It'll cut a lot faster. You'll get through the timber quicker. Its only downside is that if it hits a bit of dirt or a little tiny... The moment that point gets damaged, whether it's damaged through normal bluntness or whether you hit a bit of dirt, that's it. It's all over. But the thing is, if you've got a semi-chisel chain and you're out there cutting, say, for uh, three hours with the same chain, you won't get that out of a full chisel. You'll be reduced maybe up to 30%. So where would you use a full chisel? You know, should you buy one? Where would you use it? Well, if you live in a region where there's a lot of softwood, like your pine, maybe some of the ashes, the birches, even some of our eucalypts, when they're green, they're quite soft. A full chisel chain will rip right through them. So if it's all laying on the ground, it's all hard, uh, timber that's been sitting there for years, I wouldn't use a full chisel. I'd stick to a semi-chisel. So it's something that you can have in your toolbox. Uh, yeah. It's, look, I do like full chisel. I'm not worried about the sharpening because I always take about five chains out with me and I just swap them over. The only thing that I would say, but if you have two chains like this, so you've got a semi-chisel and a full chisel, and just say you sharpened this up 20 times, you'd probably have to sharpen this up 30 times, which means that you'll reduce the life. You'll go through more full chisel and semi-chisel chains. So the other thing is, if we talk about 
those two angles and we'll just briefly just talk about them again for those people so we'll just uh, go over that again the angle that you see here is your top plate cutting angle semi chisel is generally 30 degrees and full chisel is 25 degrees it can be 30 in softer timber the next angle is your top plate cutting angle which is generally six degrees, 60 degrees. It can either be made by a file. If it's made by a file, it generally means that the file sits about 20% above the highest point. This is referred to the side plate. This is referred to the uh, witness mark. You'll also notice if you look at the tooth, it tapers. That's for clearance. You'll also notice if we look, if we put a straight edge on top of the tooth, you'll notice that the back tape is about 10 degrees. There's a gap between the pointer that I've got and the depth gauge here. This distance in height from this height to this lower height on a brand new chain is 0.65 of a millimetre. So it brings us down that as we file or grind this down, roughly the distance from the back to the front of a 3.8 standard chain is about 10 millimetres. And this witness mark is at, is at about three millimetres. So we've got about seven millimetres of wear on the tooth. So during that life, whether we file it down or grind it, this depth gauge will have to go down accordingly. Now there's two types of gauges that are out there on the market. And the first gauge out there is called a constant depth gauge. So if we have a look there, you'll see 0.65 of a millimetre. What that means is that this depth gauge sits 0.65 of a millimetre from the highest part of the tooth. So this sits on about three or four teeth. If the depth gauge protrudes through here, you get a flat file and you file the top off. These gauges are okay only up to about half the life of the tooth. And then you really need to get into a progressive depth gauge, which is this one, also made by Steel. This one doesn't sit on top of the teeth. Well, the back part here touches the top of the tooth, but at the front here, it sits on the tie straps. And if the depth gauge needs filing, it'll protrude through this window. And as you can see, there's been a lot of file marks on top. This has got a Rockwell hardness of 62. Files are roughly flat files they're about 60 rock wool hardness so you'll only scratch it so this goes over the top of the tooth like that and as you can see it's brand new so it's not protruding out these are the gauges that you should really be using the pro progressive depth gauge not one gauge fits all there's five in the series uh, there's a difference between the 3.8 low profile, there's a difference between the 404, the 0.325 and the quarter inch pico. Whereas this gauge here, as you can see, quarter inch 3.8, 0.325 and 3.8 low profile. Plus this has got some markings on it which are useful for your 30 degrees left and right, and your 35 degrees left and right, and your 10 degrees for your milling chains. So that's probably as much as I could say about your semi chisel and full chisel. Semi chisel is uh, would be voted the best hands down because of its uh, ha how variable it is, how good it works, its durability. Because of the working corner is is much larger than a full chisel, so it takes a lot longer to blunt. But if you really want some cutting power, uh, you get yourself a uh, full chisel. Okay, so that's that. Let's talk about the two chains in the background. Now, the two chains in the background, the first chain, and we'll just try and line this up a little bit. The first chain that we see here is a skip chain. And you'll notice the difference, especially if I line this up, if I line these two teeth up, you'll notice that this chain at the back has a spacing, a standard spacing, whereas the skip chain the skip chain here, the spacing, it's missing 30% uh, of, of the spacing. There's a link, an extra link in there. So what a skip chain does is have roughly 30% less tooth. 
That means that you need less horsepower to run it. So therefore you can have a longer bar on it. So if you had a 60cc saw and it came with a 20 inch bar, you could put a 25 inch bar on it and put yourself a skip chain on. Not a problem. Now a skip chain uh, is the same as a full chisel or a semi chisel as far as it cuts across the grain. Uh, so that's the type of chain that it is, and it's purely designed only for extra length without changing your chainsaw. So yeah, you can cut a wider cut. It's going to be a little bit slower, but you're going to get through it, and yeah, you don't need to go out and buy yourself a bigger saw. So it's something that uh, some people use, but uh, not everyone. Now the last chain. Last chain is a uh, it, it is a semi chisel chain but it's got 10 degrees on the top plate angle so if we're to look at the tooth there it's 10 degrees and if we zoom in a little bit especially if you look at if we look at this tooth the top plate angle and you look at the top plate angle here 10 degrees isn't much so this is a milling chain and a milling chain cuts with the grain now some people even go slightly less than 10 degrees but 10 degrees is fairly standard depends on what timber you're cutting and one of the reasons that you change that top plate angle to 10 degrees is you don't want the chain to be jumping around. You want a beautiful, nice, smooth cut because just say, and you have a look at some of the people, especially in America with these big, huge trees, just say they're going to make a table and the table is four foot wide and you're going to slab that. Well, you know, you really want your chain set up well and well balanced. Well balanced also means that the depth gauges and the chain widths are well balanced at equal sizes left and right and the depth gauges are all uniform everything needs to be uniform it is so critical you do need a lot of experience in milling if you're ever thinking of milling or slabbing best to get on some of the forums and uh, there's a lot of people out there that uh, probably can help you so not the easiest thing in the world to do on a large piece of timber. You've got to start small and work your way up. A lot of problems you can run into. Look, that's probably about all I could say at the moment about the different chains. The, the, the main thing was on the, uh, on the first two chains. So if we just want to recap very briefly, uh, we would say that our semi-chisel chain is the most popular chain out there for cross-cutting across the timber so you know if, if you're just cutting up logs works perfect nice radius on that working corner stay sharper longer than a full chisel but if you have some very soft timber and it's off the ground you'll find out that if you put a full chisel chain on it will be more aggressive cut through that much faster but it will tend to go blunter a little bit longer so that's the main two differences and what is probably really critical and it's interesting if we look at a constant depth gauge this constant depth gauge has got a measurement of 0.65 of a millimeter so when you place it on top like that as you see it goes over about three or four and if anything protrudes out of here you file it off but it's only ever going to measure 0.65 of a millimeter from the start of a brand new chain till the end of the life to the actual end of the witness mark which is down here which is about seven millimeters of the tooth where your progressive depth gauge comes in it will start off at 0.65 of a millimeter but by the time you get down to the end of the witness mark your depth will be anywhere from about 1.2 to 1.4 millimeter in depth so almost double and you know back in in countries like america uh the depth gauge which is this type was originally invented by joseph cox from the oregon tool company in 1953 and put a worldwide patent on it another guy came along by the name of uh 
Ray Carlton. Uh, some of you people out there may have heard of Carlton Chain. He invented the progressive depth gauge and patented that in 1968. So that was uh, some 13 years uh, later, 68, yeah, I think it was 1968, 1953 or 15, yeah, that's the, yeah, it was 1968, I'm sure it was 68, Ray Carlton put a uh, worldwide patent on that uh, progressive depth gauge, and oddly enough, still only released this type of depth gauge in 2017, a lot of pressure was put on them from uh, some of the arborist groups in America saying, why haven't you released one of these? Now, Ray Carlton put a patent on his depth gauge and called it Philo Plate, and you can get that today. Uh, West Coast saws in America have uh, their own version of a uh, progressive depth gauge. Uh, Husqvarna have many different, uh, two different styles of uh, depth, uh, progressive depth gauges as well. So there's quite a few out on the market. The thing to watch out for on all these depth gauges is how hard they are. Still actually make theirs with a rockwool hardness of 62, so it's very, very hard, considering that a file is about 60 rockwell hardness. Husqvarna aren't as hard as 62 rockwell. I don't know what they are, but they're a lot softer, so be a little bit careful when you file over the top. Uh, some of the El Cheapo gauges that you buy out there uh, are not hardened at all. Uh, sad to say, Oregon originally on its patented uh, depth gauge said it needed to be hardened, but the ones that you buy today are made out of soft steel and they come out of China. So be very careful what you buy. My advice is that you buy the steel one because with this type of gauge, you have to place it on, check it, and then take the file off and check. So put the you need to put it on. You can run the file over the top of these. These have got uh, rockwell hardness too. So, but some people don't like to file over the top because they I don't know for whatever reason. But these can handle that. So it can be a one-step operation even with this. You really don't need to put it on, off, on, off, on. You just put it on, run the file over the top. As what you can do with this one, you place it over the top. You can run the file over the top, and if you look, all as you can see on there is scratch marks. You're not going to file this away. File is not, uh, is softer. Look, that's about all I can say. I hope uh, giving some information on mainly these two chains, the semi-chisel and the full chisel, that's really what I was interested in more than anything else. But the two in the back, I've given you some background uh, information on those. Who knows in the future what uh, you may do. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Have a look. There's a lot of good videos out there on uh, uh, different things. I'm not a professional by any stretch of the imagination. I'm only a hobbyist with a bit of knowledge. Uh, try to share it with other people. Uh, and that's how I learned by listening to others. So hopefully, if anything that I can help people out there just by uh, giving my knowledge what I've found to be true and accurate. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Give us any comments.